All right, everybody. Joe and Ohana, Anthony Crusoe back again. Our uh, our new entrance entrance theme totally sounds like a uh, fucking uh, Playtex fucking ad. Playtex. <laughs> <laughs> Are we trying to sell? Uh, ten no, I was going. Gym? I was going for like, you know, eighties, nostalgic. You know, super cool. Driving down the street. No, nothing music. about that reminds me of eighties music. Well, uh, it sounds like synth pop, and that's exactly what '80s was all about. The '80s was all about synth pop. You don't think so? I mean, it was a part of it, but that sounds like modern. Like that sounds like fucking commercial music. Whatever, man. Well, maybe we're selling uh, a website like Stitcher dot com or some weird shit, or we're selling clothes to basic people in rural St- counties. Isn't Stitcher like a podcast? Yeah, thing? it is. Yeah, that has nothing to do with clothes. I thought about clothes. I think yeah. about clothes all the time. I think about Stitcher. So, uh, with all other synth pop related conversation aside, uh, we have the G1 Climax. We have nights 13 and 14 uh, to go over here tonight. And no show on the 7th. So, we have a chance. I think we're both behind on the A block, right? That yeah, we didn't, uh, yeah, we didn't. Yeah, we didn't see the A block yet. So, we get a chance. Well, they don't know when we recorded this. We didn't have to let that out of the bag. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, we're all now. We're all caught. Up. Oh, sorry. <laughs> we're all caught up. It was just a prank. It was just a silly little prank. We're obviously all caught up cuz uh, we're professional here, but yep. uh No, um yeah, so we have the A and the B block on the 13th and the 14th night. And the B block, man, once again stole the show for yeah. many different reasons. Uh, we'll get into the reasons. Lots uh, very of surprises. Soon here. Lots of surprises. Lots on of show. lots of uh, ha- lots of tricks up the sleeves, and lots of booking decisions that were just just juicy, just a nice little crispy bite <laughs> of wrestling. Hey man, no spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. So <laughs> it's okay. My car doesn't have any of those, dude. It's just it's just a straight up basic yeah. car. But so yeah, we have. Um, I guess we'll get started on August fourth, two thousand seventeen. We're, by the way, everybody, we're we're inching very close. I woke up this morning to watch to catch up, and I said to myself, "The eleventh is right around the corner." Yeah. And I think that's the final day of the B block. That's the big Kenny Omega Okada match. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're almost done with the G one here. It's al- it's coming to a close, and I can't believe it. I it's uh, it's it felt like it started yesterday. Yeah, but it's also felt like it's been forever to go through. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't feel as daunting as the uh, as the Super Juniors was. This, well, the Super Juniors was daunting because we watched 21 matches. Yeah, something like that. In one night, and we were pretty much done with wrestling. Yeah. And it was time to move on to, like, UFC or something yeah. like that. Plus, the wrestling's been better on this than it of was. Of course. Yeah. Well, you can't go wrong when there's uh, really only two... Suzuki Goon guys, and they're on different blocks as opposed to like five Suzuki Goon guys yeah. in one tournament. They were almost half the tournament. Yeah. Oh my god, I- I'll never live that down. Like I will never live that down. My first Super Juniors was ruined by these fuckers. <laughs> Suzuki Goon, Jesus man. All right, so we have the A block, uh, August fourth, two thousand seventeen. This is at the Item Amy, which is I looked it up because I had to just find out what this was. Because usually everything is like a gymnasium or a sports auditorium or whatever you want to call it in Japan. This is a World Trade Center. Uh, I went to the website. It's yeah. itemahimi.com. Uh, and they cater to you. Nice. <laughs> and it's the World Trade Center. So that was pretty cool to see. But uh, yeah. So we have Yuji Nagata versus Kota Abushi to start it off here. Uh, Bushi outpaces Nagata early on to let him know that he is significantly quicker than Nagata. If you didn't know that Kota Bushi is way faster well, than Nagata. Well, when you're like 15 years younger than your opponent, yeah, you, you might be. He was feeling pretty uh, cocky about this. He's like, oh, Nagata, I got you. I, I done had you. And Nagata's like, oh, I've been tomfooled. So uh, it's no secret to nobody, by the way. Nagata goes out to the left arm with some arm bars. So he's going right after a body part pretty early on Ibushi here. The the arm, don't know why the arm, because Ibushi's a, one of those high flyers. Yeah. But, you know. Probably Ibushi. should have been the knee with the leg. <laughs> you know, I've never seen a guy get his knee worked over, ever. Nope, never. I've never seen that. Ibushi does a golden triangle to the outside. Then we get back in the ring. Yuji starts stomping the fuck out of Koda, who gets back up and starts straight palming him in the face as a response. Both men start kickboxing each other. There was a legit kickboxing fight that went on in this match. Then they start slapboxing. And eventually, they kick each other at the same time, and they're both just out on the mat. 
Bushi goes for the knee attack, uh, but Nagata catches him and puts him in the Nagata lock. By the way, I haven't been watching Yuji Nagata for long, but man, that is just... It, it's 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 just awesome. Like I don't know, it, it's so dumb, but it's so awesome at the same time. Like the the, the announcers go fucking nuts for this guy who just rolls his eyes. Yeah. And and like I like I, look, back in the day, it it was pretty awesome because obviously it meant something. Now he's kind of you know in his in, in the twilight of his career. Yeah. But it's just like he rolls his eyes. You could have you could swear he's about to fucking pop this guy's arm off. <laughs> How you, feel, how you feel about that is how I feel about the whole Kojima chop spot into the Ichazo Bakiaro elbow. Yeah, down. it's it's pretty cool. Yeah. It's pretty fucking legit. And uh, I tell you one thing. I, I'll take Nagata over Pentagon in that situation, even though Pentagon... Wow, that's tough. I like Pentagon a lot, too. Yeah, but, you know, Pentagon's on some weird-ass show when they do witchcraft and <laughs> sprinkles fucking dust everywhere. Who cares? That show This sucks. guy's seen, like, two episodes of Lucha oh Underground for the first season. Dude, it was so fucking overproduced. Like, it, Well, that's the point. It's supposed to be a television yeah, show. It's that. not... No, no I, I don't care. Like, I just don't give a shit. Like, I'm not into it, and, and I'm sorry for Lucha Underground people, but... That shit is overproduction of wrestling is uncalled for. And the fact that it's supposed to be a different take. I have to hear Vampiro talk about how this is Lucha, man. Fuck. Fuck off. Who cares? I actually kind of like Vampiro. I think oh, him and God, Matt give me a break. Good. And then Matt Stryker tries to break down Lucha wrestling. How the fuck do you do that? Hey, a flip. Oh, look. Another flip. <laughs> there you go. Well, what angle was that, Matt? That's a hot take, sir. It's a hot take. Well, you better take it out of the oven real quick and cool it off. So, uh, we get a kickboxing match here. Another close, uh, oh no, Kota, I'm sorry, I have to catch up here. He puts him in the fucking Nagata lock, that's where we still left off, yeah. rolling of the eyes. that's how we got onto this whole <laughs> tangent. Yuji starts wailing on him while he's down, so, uh, Yuji starts to, like, try to man up, he tries to get Kota to man up here, and then Kota looks pretty dead on the mat. Yuji hits a swinging suplex, but Kota kicks out, so this was a part in the match where really, ever you really started to feel... Like, maybe, maybe, maybe Yuji was going to beat this guy. Uh, but Kota kicks out. Another close two count after a backdrop that looked like it killed Ibushi. Because if you know, if you've seen a Kota Ibushi match, when he takes bumps, he just dies. <laughs> so this looked like he landed right on his fucking neck. Uh, Kota bounces back after hitting a Golden Star Bomb. But Yuji kicks out of it. And everyone's shocked because this is an awesome spot. Looks like Yuji might... Still be in this match, but uh, not for long here because Kota hits the uh, lift knee and just fucking murders him. And that's it. He pins Nagata for the three count. And Nagata still winless here. And afterwards, Ibushi uh, showed him some respect. Gives him a handshake and, uh, you know, shows shows him and says, you know what? Uh, everyone, else, No one wants to do this, so uh, hey, Nagata, good job. <laughs> No one else did it in this tournament except for fucking Kota Ibushi. So, so K- Kota's nice guy points are really up there, man. Didn't go after the arm of Tanahashi, and now it's showing her some respect. Top baby face. Top guy. So we have Tomohide Ishii versus Bad Luck Fale. Uh, yes, this is this was bigger than The Rock and Cena. Because, come on, man. <laughs> it's Bad Luck Fale. So Ishii does some crisscross shoulder blocks to try and knock Fale off his feet. Because that's pretty much what everyone likes to do when they go up against Fale. You got to fucking knock his ass down. Nothing works here because Fale eventually just knocks him down and starts controlling the match afterwards. Ishii spits on him, then gets his, ba- his ass beat some more. Uh, so Ishii tries to get up, get him up for a suplex, but he can't. So he settles for a front DDT, uh, Juice's front DDT that he does. Ishii runs the ropes again to try and take him down and almost succeeds, but gets hit with a Samoan drop. Ishii then gets him up for a brain buster and actually fucking hits it. And it was awesome because, uh, you know, a lot of guys like to sell the whole, oh my God, I can't lift this big giant guy. But Ishii fucking got this guy up for a brain buster and he did it clean. Crowd pop big and the booth pop big as well. Ishii gets a close two count with a lariat. Fale hits a big splash and the grenade. But nothing comes of it. Ishii takes him down with three enziguris and finally drops Fale to the mat. Uh, end of the match here, Ishii can only do so much before Fale nails him with a spear straight out of the book of Roman Reigns. Then a bad luck fall, and he pins Tomohiro Ishii here. So Ishii goes down, and uh, Fale picks up a uh, not easy two points here over Tomohiro Ishii. Which, well, nothing's easy over Ishii. No, but this was uh, pretty pretty surprising here because uh, Fale, 
you know? Beating up on my boy Ishii. Not a big fan of it. Well, of course not, but I mean, he's not a, a big, big guy, so they're not going to like... Sure, he might not win this thing, but he's not going to not show up. Actually, anyone that beats Ishii is just totally out of line for me because, uh, hey, hello, he's made out of stone. <laughs> How the fuck can you go up against a stone guy and beat him? Well, that's what happened there, so that's that, which sucks. So we have Hiroki Goto versus Yoshihashi. Now... Uh, you might want to ask, you, you're asking yourself here, you know, a lot of matches have implications, big match stuff, you know, every, every, everything's got a gimmick. So you have Hiroki Goto versus Yoshihashi. And if you were wondering, yes, you got up in, to get a hot dog when this one went on, because it was Hiroki Goto versus fucking Yoshihashi. But this is all like intra chaos action. This is like seeing two backup quarterbacks go at it in scrimmage. <laughs> no one cares. <laughs> no one gives a fuck. Good match. I mean, good work. Hey, listen, both guys can work. I'm not ever going to sit here and say that they can't work. It's just, they're just Goto, and Goto's slightly better than Yoshihashi. Like, if I had to pick a dodgeball game, and it was the, down to these two, I'm picking Goto any day of the week. You know, my thing about Goto is that, uh, sure, he's he's good and all, but he just never, he never seems to win when it matters, so you, it's never worth getting invested in him, and he just... There's something about him that you like. You don't cling to him like other guys that can never win the big one, you know. I mean, Goto's the coolest thing Goto's ever done is like stand like tag under with, a, uh, under tag a fucking under a fucking waterfall. Yeah. Like, <laughs> that's the coolest thing he's ever done. And then he gimmicked himself up against Okada last year and got his ass beat. And then he joined Chaos. So he, he pulled a Kevin Durant, joined fucking Chaos. And, but Chaos is no Golden State Warriors at the moment. They're just. No. Bunch of guys who make DVDs and stuff. <laughs> so that's enough of that chaos, right? So they do some shoulder blocks to each other. Yoshi appears to be in control after a shoulder block, but even he knows that that won't last very long. Goto gets back on offense, just beats him up and stretches him a bunch. Hashi hits a head hunter to take over on offense. Then Hashi hits a loud, very loud lariat to knock Goto's head off, puts him in the butterfly lock. Yoshi starts stretching Goto pretty good in the middle of the ring here. But Goto bounces back, uh, bounces, actually bounces Hashi's head off of his knee in a kind of GTR variation. It's like a quick GTR, uh, minus the clothesline. Uh, hits an Ush Ushiguroshi, but can't do much with it. Hashi starts firing up after a super kick. Looks like he could take this one, but Goto drops him with a headbutt, then two GTRs to put Yoshihashi's hopes of uh, getting to the finals here. Puts his that hopes were <laughs> done before that. <laughs> That's the point. That's the gimmick. So Yoshi goes back to his really hot wife and uh, still just Yoshi. I forgot to Google that last night. <laughs> well, she's all right. Uh, but yeah, so <laughs> Yoshihashi, everybody, going down once again. You know what? I'm going to say what? this. I know I shit on Yoshihashi pretty much a lot because he's a good, he's a good, butt. he's a good hand. He's a good butt for jokes. <laughs> But his arsenal's not that bad. Like, I actually like the butterfly lock. I know it's kind of weird, but to see a dude suffer in the butterfly lock's uh. pretty, like, it's painful to watch. Yeah. You know, because they look so helpless. Uh, and then I was really watching this move, and he kind of, he puts their arm, like, in between, in between, like, his, his hip or on his hip to hold it down. When realistically, you could just kind of like wrap it around his fucking pelvis and just kind of like move him around to get out of it. So he's just trusting them to keep a straight arm. That's what the whole move is. But yeah. whatever, man. I like it. And his move set's not bad. He's just fucking uninteresting. So you have Tetsuya Naito versus Zack Sabre Jr. Uh, Naito teases a test of strength in the middle of the ring. Uh, only to just shove Saber around and fake a high spot in favor of being tranquilo in the middle of the ring. Saber gets pissed at this and kicks the guardrail in anger. So he does the whole uh, Kenny Omega kick in the bottom rope sell job here. When things finally get going, Saber stretches his fucker and makes him regret ever being tranquilo because fucking Naito was just stretched all over the place. Uh, Saber fully in control here, and Naito really can't do much. So Tetsuya finally snaps out of it, starts up a comeback, hitting all of his signature moves. Looks like everything's going well here until Saber has him in a very deep guillotine choke that's practically folding him over. They do some counters when Tetsuya hits a Manhattan drop, then does a hanging reverse neckbreaker. And if you watch this hanging reverse neckbreaker, it was like a, it was uh, right next to the turnbuckle. 
usually when a guy takes this move, uh, he just kind of like sells the neck or he kind of just bounces up and he's, or, you know, does a weird like sell job. Zack Sabre Jr. like stiffed up almost like he just took a pile driver really badly. And I thought he killed this fucker just now. It's over. Zack Sabre Jr.'s career is fucking over, okay? No vegan diet can save this fucker now. But uh, no, it was just a good sell job. And yeah. I know it's very, very, very minuscule thing, but if you want to go back and watch this, it was pretty goddamn impressive. <coughs> so um, we get we get to the 10 minute mark. Oh, I'm dying over here. <coughs> that fucking sell job with the neck with the neck uh, breaker was. <coughs> Take a drink, man. Hold on, I got this. Gold Peak Ice Tea. <laughs> Proud sponsor of the show. <laughs> Funded by the Coca-Cola Company. I'm sorry, everybody. I'm just dying over here. That ne- that neck drop just killed me. So, <laughs> you're selling it two days, <laughs> three days later. <laughs> so we get to the 10-minute marker, and Saber goes right for the octopus hole to end it, but Naito gets to the ropes. Saber starts hitting him with all sorts of roll-ups and pinfalls and gets close with all of them. But can only get, but can't really get a three out of any of them. So Naito wraps this one up with a single Destino to win the match. And even even Naito knows that he had to work very hard for this match because he was selling, or he had to work very hard for this victory. Because once he got up the ramp, he was selling all of his injuries. But uh, the Destino takes Zack Saber Jr. down. So only needed one. Only one. And it's kind of sad because Saber, like you watch these matches, and it's just oh, like ninety percent Saber. And 10% whoever is in them, maybe 85% Saber yeah. and 15% whoever he's facing. But And then he just gets outdone by one fucking move. That's well, he's, it. He's got a very uh, frail uh, <laughs> frail body. He's very thin. His he's... muscle mass is not that big. Yeah, so uh, he doesn't quite absorb hits like uh, a bad luck Fale would. He needs to get Desperado in there. He needs to start cheating so we can get Saber some victories here, yeah. man. Come on, you know, it's not hard to cheat in New Japan. Fuck. Let's well, he's not this. out of it yet. He's only, uh, he's only two points behind the lead, so... I guess so. But I'd like to see him pick up a big victory here coming up. So we have Hiroshi Tanahashi versus Togi Makabe in the main event here in the A block. Uh, match gets very chippy early on. They fight on the outside. Makabe is in control. Really beats up on Tana here. Tana tries to get cute and use Togi's 10-punch uh, gimmick in the corner. But instead, uh, Togi says, nope, not today. And then he starts giving him some 10-count 10, some 10 count punches. Makabe goes for a lariat. Tana stops him with a kick to the gut. Then looks at him and says, fuck you. But Tanahashi said this, so Tanahashi breaking uh, uh. breaking the mold here for <laughs> you know hot baby faces. That's, uh, that's not your uh, typical no. t- your typical blue eye over no, here, no, dude. <laughs> I was disgruntled. Yeah. I called TV Asahi very quickly after I saw this. <laughs> so Togi takes his head off with a lariat afterwards. So he just killed the guy afterwards. Big hockey fight in the middle. Tana kicks the left knee of Makabe, who shows that it's hurt. So Hiroshi starts attacking it. Tana counters a lariat into a sling blade, goes for the high fly flow, but misses. Togi hits a bridge German that gets him a very close two count, but he keeps it locked in. Tries to go to the top rope for a spot, but Tana counters that. Hits a German on Makabe from the top rope. Tana caps off the match with two high fly flows, and he picks up the victory here over a ma- uh, over Togi Makabe in a match. He could have lost because Makabe was really kicking his yeah. ass here, but... uh. And Makabe you know, had been hot rolling into this uh, into this match. Too. That I is true. Was, I think he won the three in a row or something like that. But Tanahashi, uh, you can't you can't beat those frog splashes, man. They are just devastating. And uh, so Tanahashi picks up the victory here. And I, I I wanted to write it down, but I just remembered it, so I guess I'll just say it. He, when he goes to the crowd, he does the thing where he just hugs everyone and kisses babies and whatnot. Uh, there was a rather tall white guy in the crowd who came over to, like, give him a handshake. And I'm like, fuck. If I was Atanahashi, I'd be like, the fuck are you doing here, dude? You're a long way from home. Yeah. <laughs> it's interesting to see Americans at shows like this. Cause I, well, you, how do you know he's American? Maybe he's uh, some sort dude, of white was, European. Maybe, who cares? Australian, sure. maybe. Sure, whatever. This guy was fucking tall. That's all I know. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so we... we so, uh... Go to the sports center here. What's what are the what are the standings? <laughs> go, go go to the uh, the uh, New Japan desk. Yeah, <laughs> standings desk. So so Crucky, what do you think? <laughs> Don't ever compare me to John Cruck. John Cruck's a fucking asshole. Yeah. All right. <laughs> All right. So we got the A block standings for night thirteen of the tournament. Night seven for eight the A block. Tied for first place, we have Hiroshi Tanahashi and Tetsuya Naito. They're both Ouch. five and two with I ten just points. Fucking nailed them. Party fell. 
uh, tied for third place. Uh, you got a five-way tie for third place. Zack Sabre Jr., Bad Luck Fale, Kota Ibushi, Tomohiro Ishii, and Hiroki Goto. They're all, they're both, they're both, they're all four and three at eight points. And then we have Togi Makabe, who's in eighth place. He's three and four with six points. Wow. He lost to Tanahashi, but he hasn't had a match against Naito yet. So he's not That's technically eliminated yet, but he would need to beat Naito, and then he would need Naito to beat Tanahashi, and then I think it would have a weird tiebreaker between the three of them, and he would have to win out. So he's almost essentially eliminated, <laughs> but not quite just yet. And then we have uh, Yoshihashi at 2-5 and five with 4 points, and Yuji Nagata at 0-7 oh with no points there. Ten, they are actually eliminated from this from winning the block now. Damn it. I really wanted to see Yoshihashi win the whole thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right. Uh, yeah, uh, we got to wait till uh, 2018. So Tanahashi and Naito in top top uh, top top bracket here. They're they're fighting for the uh, yep. <laughs> the New Japan East here. That's crazy, man. So we got Fale tied with Ibushi and Goto. Holy shit! I thought I thought Ibushi would be running away with this, but I guess not. No. Of course, Tanis tops, but still still a very tight block here. Yeah. I, I mean, mean, there's 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 a lot of. I've got. To, I don't know about. The, I've got to really calculate the t- the tiebreakers here, but it's there are all seven pretty. guys that can still win it. And I mean, I think Makabe. Like I said, I think he needs to beat Naito, and then Naito needs to beat Tanahashi, and then I think they would all have this weird. Tana and Naito is the night before Omega and or uh, and uh, Okada, yeah. right? That's the big finale. I think so, yeah. So I, if if it works, I mean, Makabe would have to win out, including being Naito. And Naito would have to beat Tanahashi, and then there would be. They would all have. They would all be technically tied with each other because one's beaten one, who's who's lost to the other. It's, I don't know how they. Would it's just, a big. It's a big rigmarole. It's, yeah, if if they go that route, I don't know how they would how they would uh, then settle that. Making us crunch the numbers here, Pat in the stat sheet. For uh, they'd have to have like a uh, what you call it a playoff round for a uh, playoff three way. <laughs> <laughs> Winner moves on. That'd be awesome to see a playoff three way. Yeah. Or a uh, yeah finale. They they need like a finale, a three way finale. That'd be fucking awesome. Just yeah. like the Battle of Los Angeles we had a couple years ago. But um, so yeah, that's the eight. Has block. that been the last couple of years they've been doing the three ways in the bola? Is it? I think they've Is been doing. It the, I think they've been doing it the last few years. Maybe I, I could have swore one of them was a triple threat because of like a tie or because no, they I think they've been doing tw- uh, they've been doing twenty four man bolas lately. I think so. Oh. I think th- this year is gonna be twenty four man. I believe. Damn, Bull is coming up, too. Yeah. Shit. A lot of tournaments. A lot of tourneys coming up here, man. So we got uh, August 5th in the Edion Arena in Osaka. So big, big show here for New Japan Pro Wrestling. Uh, the first big show since night four of the tournament, I believe. The last time they were on television, everything else has been house shows pretty much. But uh, yeah, so we have the B block up. Well, they've been on television the whole time. They've been on TV, but this was this is like a big broadcast because you could see the you could see the top left the the whatever match it was they put it up there. Oh, you don't usually it, see that on on the right on 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 the basic shit. You know, but they've the, had announcers the whole time. Which no, they the, have. Yeah. But this was a televised show, like a big time televised show. Well, so yeah. and it's in the Eddie on Arena, so it was a big show. Uh, so we have Todiano versus Tamatanga. Uh, so this was slightly, slightly better than the Elgin match, but not by much. Because that was, as a matter of fact, most Kelly Kelly matches were a lot better than that Elgin match with wow. fucking Yano. That's, uh, that's a bold statement. Tell you what, man. Holla, holla. This was, yeah. So Tama gets the jump on Yano right away by disappearing from the ring, uh, sneak it up behind him. So they run around. Yano goes for the turn pad. Tamatanga either completely forgets how to untie a turn pad or uh, just legitimately couldn't untie it. Uh. I don't know which one's which. Uh, but when he uh, stops going for the attempt, Yano bonks him with the fu- in the fucking head with the pad. Tama goes to use a bell hammer, but Yano takes it away. When he tries to use it, Marty Asami grabs it and has to pretend he's uninterested in the match for a split second because Yano low blows him. And he does it right in front of Marty Asami. Uh. <laughs> like, all right, all right. I feel like I do this almost every fucking show. Anytime Marty Asami's in the ring, I, I blow a fucking fuse. <laughs> Go back. I'm going to say this very calmly without fucking yelling my fucking ears off or yelling my lungs out. Go back and watch this. 
Marty Asami grabs the hammer. He goes to throw it out of the ring, and then he stops and just goes, <laughs> and forgets about the match completely for like a split second. Hey, man, this tournament's been long on him, too. You know how many ma matches he's had to ref through this whole thing? This fucking guy <laughs> decided to take a breather. He took a smoke break in the middle of a fucking match. And in the meantime, Toriano low blows Tamatanga. And it's right in his peripheral. Because as soon as Yano went for the roll-up, Marty was on that shit like white on rice. He was <laughs> he just couldn't wait to count this fucking pinfall. Yeah. Holy shit. So Yano gets the victory here. And when he's walking up the ramp, uh the boys in the truck miss the best part of this whole fucking tournament. And when Tamatonga low blows Marty Asami as a result, fuck you, Marty. You deserve it. <laughs> but the truck didn't catch it. So you're truly missed. One of the best moments of my entire that, life. That's going to be a fine. <sighs> the truck didn't even bother to get an angle on this. They didn't even give a fuck. Well, they shouldn't be glorifying uh, assaulting the, official, <laughs> <laughs> the officials. <laughs> what? <laughs> but they're glorifying all the other chicanery that goes on in the ring well, with Toriano, that's the, right? That's part of the Oh, match, but he's man. a hometown guy or a home country guy, I suppose. So he could get away with it. <laughs> fuck that. This is terrible. I fucking hate Toriano. He's made me hate him so much in this tournament. <laughs> so we have uh, Satoshi Kojima versus Sonata. Uh, they can't really figure each other out early on because they do a bunch of counters, a bunch of stalemates and stuff like that. So they're still feeling each other out a few minutes into the match. Sonata gets the call or locks him into the paradise lock. And then uh, Kobashi does the chops in the corner. Oh, no. Kojima does the chops? No, hold you, on. You called him Kobashi. <laughs> Kobashi. <laughs> Sonata does the Kobashi chops to Kojima in the corner. <laughs> Whew. So he's mocking Kojima here, who then comes back with his Kobashi chops. So there's a lot of chopping going on here. Goes for the elbow, but gets crotched on the second rope. Then gives Sonata a Manhattan drop immediately afterwards. And then both men, for a, for a few seconds, look at each other. And they're selling the balls. And they're like, man, this sucks. <laughs> We're both in pain here, big time. A lot of ball stuff on this block. A lot of ball. <laughs> a lot of... But, hey, they don't call it the B block for nothing. Wow. Kojima goes for the Lariat, but it gets countered into a skull end attempt. Sonata drops him with a TKO, then goes for the skull end, but can't get a submission. So he goes to the top rope for the Moonsault, and Kojima moves out of the way. Sonata goes for another, misses again. Kojima lays him out with a Lariat to the back of the head. Crowd starts to get hot when Satoshi no-sells a drop kick. Just brushes that shit off. Uh... Then counters a skull end into a Koji fusion. Kojima senses the end, fires up, hits the ropes, and hits a lair that sends Sonata into a fucking other dimension. And that is it. Satoshi Kojima is on the board here. Yes. Three counts. He, he will not go winless in this whole thing. I am excited. I am so glad. I thought they would do the same thing they did with the, uh, they're gonna do with Nagata, but I'm glad I'm glad he got the win. <laughs> This was a bittersweet moment, mostly because I was eating dark chocolate, but it was a very bittersweet moment uh, because, you know, I was pulling for Kojima. This was an awesome moment because after the match, he, like, collapsed as if to say, fuck, <laughs> took this long, but I finally got on the board, and here I am with my Blue Justice shirt, crying my eyes out, going, could happen to us one day. <laughs> the blue team will get a W someday. Uh, it, feels, it feels just like being a Cubs fan. It's just the same thing, being a Yuji Nagata fan here. But yeah, so Satoshi gets on the board after uh, Sonata. So Sonata not only gets the win over Elgin, everyone's just dropping like flies here as far as momentum goes. Because I remember when Sonata gave Elgin a big loss and it was kind of lame. And now Sonata's the one to do the J-O-B to fucking Satoshi. So uh, yeah, man. So Kojima gets on the board. It was an awesome moment. And I don't think he's bringing another match after this, so... We have Michael Elgin versus Minoru Suzuki. Uh, Suzuki beats him up on the outside with a chair, then starts giving him an armbar with the chair. Starts to injure him a bit. Taichi and Desperado, they get some cheap hits on, on uh, Elgin here. Suzuki beats him up some more with a chair and attacks the right arm some more. You know, you know, happens a lot. Yeah. Elgin starts getting back into the match with a springboard splash and a lariat. He continues to do lariats with his injured arm. So apparently... Uh, he doesn't feel it when he hits a lariat, but once he hits the lariat, it hurts like hell. 
So, uh, yeah, if you want to, if your arm hurts, I don't think you could do a lariat. This guy, the, this guy should learn how to use his left arm. So, in situations like this, where you're doing lariats where your hurt arm makes you look really stupid. So, Suzuki wrenches the arm some more, then grabs Red Shoes away from Elgin, gives him a extremely light shove on the shoulder. Like, so light, okay? Like, very light. <laughs> Okay. Red Shoes crumbles to the mat. Crumbles to the mat. As if he's just been shot in the head. So guess what happens, everybody? Take a fucking guess. Taichi uses a chair to attack Elgin while Red Shoes is down. If you watch how Red Shoes sold it, he looked like a guy who was looking for the smallest spill at the retail store. And just wanted to bust his ass for any reason to get a lawsuit. <laughs> That's what this was. It was awful. He's and, already got to get an ambulance chase on retainer. And and, and 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 the New Japan refs, if you've seen them before, they are the worst. They have the worst timing with this stuff. Like they drop so late. They don't. They have to process that they've just been hurt. Okay. Like, <laughs> oh man, this is so frustrating. So, Elgin, uh, or Taichi, and Desperado get into the ring. Or, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm skipping ahead here. Suzuki grabs Red Shoes, holds his face down. So, so Red Shoes is essentially crippled, you know, because Suzuki's arm is on him, so you can't move. So then Taichi and Desperado get into the ring in plain sight. And they start going after Elgin, who just gives them both a fallaway slam at the same exact time. Gives Suzuki a backhand slap that sends him into another fucking dimension. It was loud, and it looked like it hurt. Follows that up with an Elgin bomb, and he pins Suzuki in the middle of the ring and gets the victory here. So, Elgin, it's it's almost too late here, though, because he suffered those very a very awful loss and a loss that shouldn't have happened. So, I, it's a nice victory, I guess. But it feels like Elgin's just so far gone now. Yeah. After what he's just been through the last couple yeah, of days. Yeah, I mean, no, after the whole thing from this tournament plays out, there's not many people that are still, like, oh, almost everybody's officially eliminated after this show. There's only three people that are actually that can still win this tournament. I actually, man, Elgin was so hot out of the gates. Yeah. He, he and then he got to the fucking All-Star game. And just died. <laughs> or he, he he got into the home run derby. <laughs> like, he oh, went Aaron up, Judge. Yeah, he, or anybody who, or Bobby Abreu. Yeah. Uh, was a, when he was in the home run derby, his yeah, thing I, wasn't ruined to <laughs> swing. And... So that Yano match really ruined uh, Elgin's swing here. Because yeah. he just can't do much afterwards. But he finally gets a victory. It's not going to make any sense to people who don't, who don't watch baseball. Yeah, whatever. They should watch baseball. So we have Juice Robinson versus Kenny Omega. Uh, they do some basic stuff in the beginning. Omega taunts Juice by slapping him around, being super disrespectful. And then Juice fires back with some jabs, and then he takes over after that. So Robinson throws him into all four turnbuckles, uh, puts his head in all four turnbuckles. And then the last one, he threw him, and then Omega just ripped a page out of the HBK book of selling because he fucking like, put his feet on the second rope and then bounced off and did a front flip. This is verbatim the exact same spot that Shawn Michaels did to Hulk Hogan in 05 at SummerSlam. Literally the most overselling, fucking ridiculous bullshit you've ever seen in your life. I mean, I don't know if this was Omega trying to fuck with Juice Robinson or uh, play, but th th that's what it was. It was ridiculous. So Omega tries to suplex Juice to the outside, but they end up going over. Both of them go end up going over. Omega notices that Juice has re-injured his left arm. Because if he didn't, you know, if Juice didn't, you know, rub his shit half the time, no one would know. Gives him a figure four on the ring post and backs off as the ringside doctor <laughs> attends to him. Why do you put that in quotes, man? Like, you don't know if he's actually a doctor. Ringside doctor. Okay. So there's a doctor at ringside, clearly. I've made that clear. Yeah. So, usually... He might be a legitimate physician. He might actually... Uh, I don't know. I've seen doctors in the crowd plenty of times. I think this guy, true, is yeah. just, this guy is just... I mean, the, the New Japan crowd is just doctor and nurse they, heavy, they, so... They want to make they want to make it clear to New Japan Pro Wrestling that they are, in fact, trained in this field. <laughs> what, a, what a good gesture. Yeah. So, he's outside, and the doctor is just literally... Not doing jack shit. I mean, he's just there, like, 
off into another world, <laughs> out to lunch, not really doing much, not checking on him, not grabbing his fucking leg or nothing. Juice is just there, getting counted out, looking at the ring, crying and being in pain. And the ringside doctor is just like, I don't know what to do. Here's here's some uh, Robitussin. <laughs> So, Juice gets back in at the 15 count. Good stuff happens between these two. Uh, they go back and forth. Juice starts building steam with a fallaway powerbomb. Omega takes forever to hit a V-trigger, so Robinson counters with a wheel kick. Uh, Omega goes for another V-trigger, but gets murdered by a hard left jab here. Kenny looks to end it all, hits a V-trigger, then sets him up for the one-winged angel. And then Robinson reverses it into a uh, nice little roll-up and gets the pinfall victory. Juice! They were, they were, the, the announcers were totally stoked on this victory. <laughs> this was such a fucking shock that immediately afterwards, Robinson goes, goes to Red Shoes, hugs him, yeah. and then and goes, like three? was like, did I win? Yeah. <laughs> he didn't even know if he won the match. This was awesome. Yeah. Like, this was fucking great. Kenny was like, what? The crowd was like, what? <laughs> no one knew what the fuck to do. <laughs> Because Juice Robinson just defeated Kenny fucking Omega. I'm glad to see that all of Juice's hard work in this tournament has finally culminated in a big win. <laughs> Over Kenny Omega. Yeah. While he might not look good in the standings, having one of those wins be against Kenny Omega. See, I, that, that's the gimmick here. If, uh, if, if they should have, and, and this is how it should go for you know most years. If you're just totally botching everything, you're just uh. complete ass the whole tournament. And you got to pick up one big fucking win to really kind of make you relevant still. Yeah. So this was, this was perfect. This was great. And like the, uh, the two like big unsung hero guys of this block of both beating Kenny Omega. That's true. Yeah. That is true. And uh, I do I do uh, hope that Juice Robinson found himself some poon tang after this match because yeah. I'm assuming it was thrown at him. Yeah. You know, he's not the IWGP champion, but boy, he just beat Kenny Omega. -ka, so he's got to be good for something, right? <laughs> uh, so, yeah. So, Robinson gets on the board here in a big win. Kazuchiko Kata versus Ivoru in the main event here. Uh, by the way, I saw the post-match. And my man, Milano Collection AT, was talking to the play-by-play uh, the -play announcer. I don't, know, I don't know this gentleman's name. I just know Milano Collection. It's a fucking sweet name. <laughs> And he was trying to tell him how to say V. It was absolutely hilarious. <laughs> He's like, Ebru? He's like, no, e poor, poor, evil. <laughs> These guys had a discussion about how to say the V for the longest. <laughs> it was priceless, okay? <laughs> they they just they just they 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 just made their own joke there. Yeah. We don't we didn't even have to do it for them. They did it. <laughs> So, Okada comes to the ring here, visibly overconfident in himself, doing all sorts of fucking weird, wacky shit, like shaking the camera, dancing to his own music, all sorts of fucking wild shit. It was weird, but it had a purpose. So, Evil starts the match by asserting his dominance and showing Okada that he won't be a fucking pushover here. And they end up on the outside. Evil does his little concerto that is still being allowed, not uh, not illegal by any stretch of the imagination. But unseen, imaginative low blows are totally called in this in this tournament. Red shoes looks right at this and goes, "Oh, you guys, <laughs> chairs, come on, get in the ring, stop this nonsense." Um, I can can someone make a call to the office? Can we call the IWGP and have a conversation with them yeah. about this situation because? I just, I just the, the athletic commission of the state of Japan is uh, they're not going to be too thrilled with this. <laughs> nope, they they need to strip Kazuch. Uh, not even. I was going to say Okada. They need to strip Evil of all his victories here in the G1 Climax this year. So they get back in the ring. Match slows down a bit as Evil just does some stuff, then a chin lock. So it's really slow in the beginning, but it would eventually pick up. Okada then takes over, builds some steam with some of his basic moves. Then Okada hits a diving elbow, then hits the Rainmaker pose, and the guy in the truck got it right. Good job, guy in the truck. <laughs> but Evil cuts him off with a super kick to the midsection. Okada was going for a spot where he was going to seat him on the top rope, give him a drop kick to the outside. But Evil kind of fell over. He was slipping a bit here. So they, they struggled to get him back on the turnbuckle. Yeah. So I'm thinking, this better have a fucking payoff. 
So when he does get him up there, he just strap kiss him to the outside. Yeah. <laughs> so that had the shittiest payoff ever. It's like, well, he's falling to the outside. Hold on. Let me help him up. And then kick him to the outside. What an asshole. Okada's looking to leap over the guardrail into the crowd here, but Evil uses logic and good strategy and launches a fucking chair at his head. So that's good stuff there by Evil. He really thought about that one. Then he does a darkness falls onto a pile of chairs in the middle of the crowd, which I'm assuming hurt a lot. The crowd loved it, and a bunch of picture flashes went off because uh, it's it's not it's rare to see just a swarm of flashes from the crowd. Yeah. You don't see that anymore. Yeah, it was it was it was cool back in the day. Yeah, you know, when, when they were like fucking le- sweet Kodak when films, legitimate flash photography existed. Yeah. Uh, those were the days, man. You know, everyone just has their phone. Wrestling was so much better when people had the flashes yeah. and the little stupid fucking... Cell phones must have really killed like the uh, the portable camera. Uh, I don't know if it happens at baseball games, but seeing a pitch getting thrown and like a million yeah. fucking photographs go yeah. off at the same time was the coolest goddamn thing in the world. Yeah, not anymore. When, when McGuire hit a 70th home run, or, or actually when he hit a 62nd home run, and then when Bush Stadium went nuts... <laughs> Good times, man. Yeah. Good times. All those flashballs. I remember all that. Ah, the summer of 98. <laughs> the summer of 98. Yeah. So back in, the, back in the ring here, Evil does another darkness falls in the middle of the ring, but only gets a two count. Okada hits a big time missile drop kick. I mean, he fucking lo- like leaped. He leapt from the top of the fucking of the, uh, the top turnbuckle all the way to Evil, who was sitting down. It was pretty fucking awesome. Uh, so he gets back into this matchup after that. Evil recovers with a lariat. Start, the crowd starts to get into this matchup and gets on Evil's side here. And I, I just need to make a comment about this. I just think it's hilarious how you have like little girls and boys in the crowd ch- chanting, Evil! <laughs> evil! It's hilarious. It's just the best. It's like, oh, J- Jimmy, Jimmy Coon, what's your favorite wrestler? Evil! <laughs> Well, Jesus, can't I like, relax. I, I like how you used the Japanese honorific, but gave him a totally Americanized name. <laughs> Jimmy Coon. It's better than Jimmy Wang Yang. I guess that's that. It's, it's a lot better than that. It's hilarious. I just think it's funny. That this guy's name's Evil. I mean, he couldn't come up with anything else. It's just Evil? You know, who's next? Who's his tag partner? Good? <laughs> <laughs> well, that would be more, more so his enemy than his tag that's partner. Just, yeah. They need to do that. It's just a... That's just a storyline waiting to happen, Gato. You're welcome. So Kata uh, finally hits a Rainmaker, but doesn't go for the pinfall, which could have won him the match here. But instead, it costed him the match. He hits another one, and it again, cost. it costed it you, him. It's just cost, dude. You made it. You made it uh, past tense twice. Uh, so it's a new thing. <laughs> uh, just, just, just go with it, dude. So he hits another one. Doesn't go for a pinfall. So here's the lesson, everybody. This fucker hit two Rainmakers, but he goes, no, not yet. I'm going to fucking kill him. So he tries for a third, but Evil catches on, avoids it. Okada goes for another, or he goes for the third Rainmaker again. But Evil counters into the STO, and he pins Kazuchika Okada in the middle of the fucking ring. And boy, this was awesome. Did not see that coming. And Okada's... I'm pretty sure I said at the beginning of this tournament that he was going undefeated through this whole thing. There was no way he was going to lose. Well, uh, it was pretty much written on the wall here that Okada's overconfident. And if you watch this guy, it was the little things. It was it was slowly building. Every victory, he got more and more confident. Way too fucking cocky for his own good. Yeah. And in this match, his final match being undefeated, he was just having a good time, man. It's like, ah, the G1, fucking evil. How could I lose to a guy named Evil? No chance. Well, he did. And instead of going for the Rainmaker, or instead of hitting the Rainmaker the one, the first time and going for a pin, he goes, nope, I gotta kill this fucker. Yeah. But it, that costed him the match. It, you just did it co- again. It cost him the match. <laughs> So it costs this fucker the match, and uh, Evil ma- gets the victory here, and everyone loved it. My man, Milano Collection, AT loved it, because he loves going everything. He loves yelling that shit. It's his favorite new thing. And if you didn't know everybody, everything is evil. 
And he tells Okada in English, he says, welcome to the dark realm or the dark world. The darkness world, that's what he called it. So welcome to the darkness world, Okada. So I'm assuming that Okada is going to come out in black next time he's, you know. <laughs> he just totally the changes ring. his character. His hair is going to be black. His yeah, gimmick's going to be just just, just all black. <laughs> Emo Okada. <laughs> Emo. <laughs> he's going to have guy liner. His whole shit is going to get changed up, everybody. So get ready for it. So uh, out of all of the upsets, what was what was your... What was your favorite here? The B block obviously stole the show here. I mean, the A block was fun. I can't yeah. really think of any match that was great on the A block. Uh, I'm looking at it right now. I guess Kota Ibushi and Nagata, the first match. Yeah. Really, everything else was just kind of okay. Naito and Sabre yeah. was all right. Sabre, like I said before, Sabre, it was all Sabre, and then Naito just kind of won. So that's why I'm not going to really acknowledge it. Makabe and Tanahashi was fun, but it was just two guys kicking each other's ass. And so I'm going to go with Nagata being the best one on the, the A block. Yeah, I agree with that one. B block. Uh, It's a tie between Omega and Robinson and uh, Evil and Okada here. Those two big upsets. I mean, Kojima had a great upset, but it's against Sonata, you know. It's whatever. So um, I know Omega has the one loss already, but I think the Juice Omega one was probably the bigger upset. It was. I mean, evil, evil was cool, but you, but I, I felt like, but evil was like hanging with Omega the match before that. That's true, yeah. and evil is kind of high in the standings. Yeah. Juice was is is not yeah. close at all, and he beat a guy who's second in the standings right yeah. now. So, and he's headed for the G one final. I mean, the they G1. were they were both equal. They were both pretty equal upsets, but I think you give it just a hair hair more to Juice. Well. That's it, everybody. That's all we got here, and the standings. The standings for the B block. Uh, night 14 of the tournament, night 7 for the B block. In sole possession of first place, Kazuchika Okada, 6-1 and one now. Wow. With 12 points. Uh, Kenny Omega and Evil are tied for second place at 10 points. They're both 5-2. and two. Now, everybody else in this tournament is officially eliminated. Technically, Minoru Suzuki and... Uh, Sonata could tie, but Sonata has lost to Okada, I believe, already. So that officially eliminates him because if Okada lost out and Sonata won out, they'd both be six and three, and Okada would have a tie break. Suzuki hasn't faced Okada yet, but has lost to Omega. And if they were to tie in points, Omega would have to beat Okada, and then Omega would have the tie break over Suzuki. So Omega or Suzuki is officially eliminated as well. They're, and they're they're tied for third place at four Damn and three and eight points. Suzuki's out of the tournament. Yeah. What a heartbreaker. Yeah. Then we've got uh, Yano and Michael Elgin uh, tied at for sixth place at three and four with six points. Tied for eighth place, Tamatanga and Juice Robinson at two and five with four points. And Kojima one and six with two points is bringing up the rear in the B block. Are you sure? Are you sure? Because I'm looking at the PewterUsuSpirit.net yeah. uh, standings here, and it says that Yano is three and four, and Elgin's two and four. How is that even possible? Unless someone fucked up here. Well, they've all had the, the same amount of matches. They probably just forgot to write down. They probably That's just messed true. it up on the writing. It says Yano has six points, and Elgin has four points. Yeah, maybe it was wasn't updated because they all have all wrestled the same amount of matches. It's not like an Elgin match was canceled. But it was. This was under the August fifth. Oh, well, no, the, wait. Yeah, and they screwed up. Oh, yeah, they did screw up. Because Yano can't have seven matches and, and Elgin have six matches. That can't happen. That's true. Because they've wrestled every night of the B block. That is true. Well, you've got... And, the... there's, and there's been no draws yet. Well, so. you crunched the numbers, so yeah. I, can't go, I can't argue that logic. Yeah. <laughs> You're the stat sheet here. Yes. Well, it's interesting to see uh, Okada, Omega, and fucking... Takaki Watanabe. <laughs> oh, wow. You're, you're, you're dropping the real name. Dropping the shoot name. Yeah. In third fucking... Evil's in third place, dude. He's looked good. He's looked Evil's, good. So, I mean, he, he deserves it. Hey, man. I don't want to be that guy, but Evil is definitely the darkest horse of this tournament. Boo. <laughs> Everybody unsubscribe from that shit joke. Everything <laughs> is dark. <laughs> So, that's all we got here for the uh, fourth and the fifth. Uh, we've gonna, we're going to come back for, I believe, the sixth and the eighth. Yeah. So, yes, there's no six, show tonight. Sixth and the eighth. So, we got the sixth and the eighth to look forward to. And we'll, so I got to 
So we got to watch the A block. I got to watch the A block. Yeah, so do I. I haven't, I haven't started it yet. And then we got to we got to next we got tomorrow off. So possibly in the morning. Yeah. Wait, no, wait. It's just just A block then. Okay. Like maybe I could split these these matches. Maybe we like two tonight and then right before I go to bed and then two in the morning, yeah. I suppose. Well, whatever. You, um people don't need to know your whole yeah, right. watching I don't schedule. Yeah, I, I was I was I was just yeah, trying to, you, you don't know. have to you don't have to think out loud on Whoops. the air. So that's all we have, everybody. So we'll be back for uh, the next two nights. So we have a day off here on the 7th. And until then, we'll see you guys another time. Take care.